When I first saw cases in India, what struck me was how miserable people were and how even the staff at the infectious disease hospital did not want to interact with them. You could smell smallpox before you entered the room and it smelled like death. It's about as miserable a disease as, as you can imagine. But smallpox eradication, it was to this day the greatest you know, health achievement ever. In 1959, the World Health Organization declared war against smallpox. Fifteen years later, in 1974, India was the final battleground of the campaign. Using the strategy of surveillance and containment, the WHO pushed past politics, worker strikes, and cultural barriers to land at target zero. Smallpox is a viral infection that has plagued humanity for thousands of years. One in four with smallpox died. One out of ten were left partially or completely blind. The infection passes from person to person through the air. Crowded living conditions are ideal for its spread. More than 500 million deaths were caused by smallpox, more than all genocides and world wars combined. In 1796, Edward Jenner invented the smallpox vaccine. Just nine years ago, smallpox killed two million persons around the world, mainly in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Yet, over 150 years later, smallpox was still killing millions. In 1958, the Soviet Union proposed that the WHO adopt a global smallpox eradication campaign. It passed by just two votes. In 1959, the eradication team led by D.A. Henderson and Dr. William Feggy, were deployed to United Nations headquarters in Geneva. Twelve years later, smallpox had been eradicated from all but four countries. The largest and most formidable was India. The smallpox vaccine was first brought to India in 1802. Still, India suffered major epidemics throughout the 19th century. In 1962, India established the National Smallpox Eradication Program. Unreliable vaccines and injection methods were some of the barriers to eradication. Leslie Collier's freeze-dried vaccine and Dr. Benjamin Rubin's bifurcated needle propelled the eradication campaign forward. The campaign continued to face many barriers in India, including a lack of cooperation from all levels of government. In 1973, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi urged her people to cooperate with the nationwide eradication effort. By 1974, 86% of the world's smallpox cases were in India, and mass vaccination was not working. India ran 11,000 daily trains with millions of passengers. With a population of 607 million and a birth rate of 25 million, Henderson and Feggy, building on their success in Africa, decided to deploy surveillance and containment in India. In December of 1966, we got notice of a smallpox outbreak in eastern Nigeria, but we didn't have enough vaccine. We couldn't do mass vaccination. So what we did was we used the network of missionaries who would get on the radio every night and report new outbreaks. And with a map in front of me, I divided up the area to ask each missionary to send runners to the villages in their area the next day. 24 hours later, I knew exactly where the smallpox cases were. And, and the outbreak stopped so fast that it took our breath away. First defined by Alexander Langmuir, the surveillance and containment system required quarantining victims of a virus and vaccinating those who had been in close contact with them. In 1974, India had about half a billion people. They lived in about 120 million houses in about 500,000 villages in 21 states. And to eradicate smallpox, it meant that we would have to visit every single house in India. And ultimately we did. We visited 120 million houses in India every month for about 20 months. 
we did more than a billion house calls. After an outbreak report, a second team would search markets, fairs, and religious ceremonies. They used recognition cards while asking if anyone had seen a person with smallpox. To visit 100 million houses in six days' time, an army of workers had to be organized. Procedures had to be replicated in other states and districts. Tens of thousands of searchers, supervisors, and evaluators needed to be trained. Piles of paperwork were created and collected. Northern India continued to face multiple outbreaks. They had strong beliefs in Satala Ma, India's goddess of smallpox. Villagers believed when someone contracted smallpox, Satala Ma was visiting them. Strangers were not supposed to visit, which caused villagers to conceal smallpox cases from search teams. Watchguards were posted and instructed to vaccinate all visitors. In 1974, 50 to 100,000 watchguards were required. Rewards were given for reporting outbreaks. Initially, the reward was small and given to both the healthcare worker and the person making the report. As the number of cases decreased, the reward increased to $1,000. By 1974, for the first time in the campaign, the number of monthly outbreaks was decreasing. Surveillance and containment was succeeding, in spite of facing many barriers. It was at that time then that the effects of the Middle East War were being seen in gasoline prices, so that the assessment and supervision could not be as good. There was a railway strike in India, which kept gasoline from actually moving by train to Bihar. Because of the railway strike, other groups were trying to strike. And in one particular city in the state of Bihar, we knew about 110 outbreaks, but all health workers were on strike. The vaccinators throughout Bihar were on strike or going on strike. The Cold War and the Vietnam War led many members of the Indian government to become suspicious of foreign workers. On May 18, 1974, India detonated its first nuclear device. In 1974, Indian newspapers printed conspiracy stories about the US CIA working covertly in India. Negative press put pressure on politicians. In May of 1974, the Minister of Health of Bihar, Kuran Singh, announced he would no longer support surveillance and containment. During the announcement, a field worker bravely stood, urging Singh to reconsider. He pleaded that if a house was on fire, you don't put water in all of the houses. Instead, you direct all of the water to the house on fire. His message resonated with the minister, who changed his mind, adding one month to the timeline. By June, the numbers finally turned in their favor. It was clear that the end was in sight. The last reported case of smallpox in India came on May 24, 1975. The World Health Organization says smallpox has now been wiped off the face of the earth and will never return. Forty years later, surveillance and containment is still the primary strategy for battling infectious diseases. It is being used to eradicate polio, and the WHO predicts that polio can be eradicated in just a few years. Breaking news tonight on the coronavirus, word from China of a huge increase in the number of confirmed cases and deaths. The coronavirus outbreak reminds us that infectious diseases have not gone away, right? So in the earlier part of the last century, uh, we developed vaccines, we invented antibiotics. In many ways, people talked about the golden age where essentially we've defeated infectious disease. But what we also know is that there are new infectious diseases that are rising. Uh, there are viruses and bacteria out in the environment, uh, oftentimes that uh, may infect or sicken animals that can eventually cross over and infect human beings. The lessons we learned from eradicating smallpox from the world will continue to guide us as we face the uncertainty of the future. But in the end, we succeeded, and the last case of smallpox, this little girl, Rahima Banu, when she coughed or breathed, and the last virus of smallpox left her lungs and fell on the dirt, and the sun killed that last virus. Thus ended a chain of transmission of history's greatest horror. I can see clear.